Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank, and today I want to talk about bed adhesion. So first off, let me just apologize. I'm actually in my printer room and I have a couple going. Um, the loudest printer right now is my Ender 3. It shouldn't be too loud, but you might hear some fan noise and I'm gonna try to stay near the mic. So I just started kicking off a couple printers and just kind of getting things going. And I realized I've never actually made a video or talked about bed adhesion and the types of beds I use and what I prefer. And like, I know I talk about them occasionally in some videos, uh, my magnetic beds and what I've upgraded, but I want to talk about my experience with it. Now, this isn't a blank at all. This is the best, you know, what's the best uh, bed you can use and what's the best this and that. And oh, you know, they don't want you to know this. It's none of that. It's my experience. Take it with a grain of salt that you might agree with some of this. You might not. So as you can see here, I have some pretty good bed adhesion going on with a print that literally just got done. It's uh, the bed's actually still cooling down a little bit, but it's pretty, uh, pretty nifty. It's pretty on there for sure. And it's very tiny. You can see where the adhesion is. It's just two little spots. Hi, mom. So through my experience with this, I've kind of gone through a couple beds. I originally started with my glass bed on my Creality CR-10S, the blue CR-10S that's sitting right there that won the West for me. And it's what started all of this. I could not get this glass bed to work. This thing was an absolute nightmare. I tried everything. I tried every recommendation. I tried, you know, hairspray and glue and uh, rubbing alcohol and Dawn dish soap, and I couldn't get this thing to work. Turns out a big contributing factor to this was the fact that these stock glass beds are typically warped. Okay, cool. That sucks. So everybody recommended getting a different bed. So when I started down that journey, I actually ended up landing on these cool magnetic beds. And these are what I swore by for quite a while. These things are absolutely great. But I wanna go back and talk about the glass bed. So the glass bed, everybody says, oh, make sure it's clean, make sure it's level, do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. You'll notice that I have some painter's tape on here. This is another solution to glass beds. And one thing I personally wanna clear up, which always seemed a little silly to me, was when people are like, oh, I use a glass bed with tape. You're not using a glass bed anymore. You just made a rough surface like the uh, the stock Ender 5 or stock Ender 3 or the CR10 Max bed. This is now a porous surface and this is like a rough surface. You're not using a glass bed anymore. So don't say you're using a glass bed. You're using tape. Now, again, yeah, tomato potato at this point, but you're not actually utilizing the glass bed. You gave up on the glass adhesion and now you move to a rougher surface. That's how I feel about that. But for some people, the tape works absolutely fine. And if that's working for you, that's great. Uh, I personally couldn't get it to work myself. So I moved on to the magnetic beds. Now I was gonna be printing a lot of big things using rafts. And what everybody said is these things are absolutely great for PLA. These things are great for rafts. Um, they're not gonna give you that perfectly smooth glass bottom, which I really didn't care about. Most of my stuff was for, you know, Iron Man armors and suits and props. And I'm not looking for that beautiful, perfect first layer. As long as it sticks, I'm good. Now, if you've never used a magnetic bed, it actually comes with this flexible sheet and this is, this is actually the build surface here. Now there's nothing magnetic about this. Where the magnet actually is, is on the print bed itself. And I actually still have the magnetic sticker on my CR-10S because if I ever wanna go back to the magnetic build plate, I can stick it right on and it stays there. So all you have to do and remember is that anytime I switch these back and forth, I'm going to need to re-level the bed because this magnetic bed is a little bit thinner than the glass bed. However, I can still switch back and forth as I deem necessary. So this is the magnetic bed and it sticks on and it's a pretty permanent solution. Uh, you can't just go and take this magnetic sticker off now. Um, you'd have to go and peel this off. And uh, so it does add some complicate. It has a little bit of permacy to it. So you just have to be careful on the choices you make. However, once I switched to the magnetic bed, all my adhesion problems were fixed. Now, over time, what I started to realize was as I was using this magnetic bed, it started to build up a, uh, a really smooth surface. It started to get smoother and smoother like glass. And what I didn't realize was happening was after every print, I wasn't cleaning it properly. And now I was using Dawn dish soap. I was using hot water. Um, I had never really switched to rubbing alcohol and it worked great, but I was losing adhesion and my, my prints were starting to actually lift up and curl up in the corners. So to counteract this, I started taping my rafts down. As my print would go, once the raft layer was finished, I would actually go and tape the corners of the raft down. 
Now I started to amplify the problem. Now I had glue and a bunch of other crap just building up on the build plate. And I started to lose more and more and more adhesion, meaning I had to use more and more tape. Well, what I decided to do was try another bed out. And this is the Creality Ultra Base. Now this bed, I, I can't even talk enough about this bed. My first experience with this was actually when I finally got my Ender 5 Pluses, which are sitting down there. These actually come stock, and it's gonna be hard to see, with the Creality Ultra Base. These are their probably their best beds, and these are an all glass surface with like this micro porous surface. I think they call it like a nanoparticle film but you can kind of see it. And it's actually just a, a very, very thin, small micro, you know, mesh weave tape that sits on top of it. I'm sure there's a really technical term for it, but, but for the life of me, I kind of just don't care. And once I started utilizing these on my Ender 5 Pluses, my adhe I've never had adhesion like this. I was able to actually lift up and move the printer by picking, trying to pick up the uh, actual print off of it. And once it cooled down and I let it sit there for a little bit, the prints did pop off absolutely perfectly. And I was totally fine with them. Um, it did take a little bit of a spatula to try a little putty knife spatula to kind of scrape them off. And you do have to be careful with these beds because you can scratch and damage them. So you really want to make sure that your putty knife doesn't have any uh, bent corners or bent edges or you'll start to damage them. I actually just recently kind of put a big nick in that one because I wasn't being careful, but as long as you, you know, keep that to a minimum and you move your prints around, you're really not going to run into too many problems with damaging and ruining the whole surface. Now I'm printing with exclusively PLA, eh, PLA plus. I don't think I've printed with normal PLA in months. So PLA plus loves these type of beds. PLA plus loves magnetic beds. So you're really not going to have such levels of adhesion where you're going to start to rip off this surface. Now I do know people who say don't use these ultra bases with PETG. Um, to actually flip it over because if you flip over this nice new fancy level bed it's actually just a perfectly smooth glass surface so you kind of get two build surfaces in one one you can use for pla and one you can use for things like pet g now i've never printed in pet g i actually have a box of it sitting right there from sunloop i am about to try it out i am also now experimenting with e-sun filament that's what's going on my cr10 max here and i'm actually pretty impressed with it so that's uh that's for another video so these, this ultra base bed has been absolutely great. Now, some other types of beds I've actually dealt with is what I came with my uh, Ender 3. This is the stock Ender 3 build plate, and it's like this resin fiberglass bed. It's really cheap, it's really flimsy. It's almost like a sticker on top of it right here that you can see kind of peeling up. And I actually had really good adhesion with this, but at the time I was on my magnetic bed kick. So immediately when I got my Ender 3, I went and ordered a magnetic bed for it. And I just ran with that and I was you know, having some, uh, having some fun with it and you can see it's printing just fine. But I never really had problems with that micro, with this uh, rougher fiberglass surface that's on the stock under three bed, which is actually the same type of sticker bed that's on my uh, CR10 Max. Now, instead of this flimsy plastic here, because this isn't, you know, this isn't the end of the world, here we have a giant metal plate that, you know, is help meant to distribute the heat better. So this is the same types of level of adhesion that I'm kind of getting with, um, between my stock Ender 3 bed and my CR10 Max. And if they release an ultra base bed for the CR10 Max, you better believe I'm gonna snag it as quickly as possible. So after I started messing with my, uh, these ultra base beds that just, I mean, like I said, just beautiful levels of adhesion, I decided, hey, let me try to clean my magnetic beds. Maybe I can strip these down so much that I can actually utilize them. So what I did is I went and grabbed some Goo Gone or Goof Off or sticker remover, put these in my garage, laid them down, and I soaked them in it for about two hours. When I came back and stripped them off and uh, finished washing them off, these things looked brand new. I, I mean, there's some damage on these, but I have used them since, and they had the level of adhesion I had when I first got them. They had just as good adhesion as my Ultra Bases. And this kind of leads me back to the whole main point of this, clean your damn beds. The most problems I was having with my bed adhesion was my beds weren't properly cleaned. Now I see people use these additives. I see people use glue sticks and hairspray and trust me, I was doing it too. But you can't use those type of additives on these rougher porous surfaces or the magnetic beds, especially not the ultra base beds because what it does is it starts to fill up the pores and starts to turn this this uh, tougher, more uh, abrasive surface into a smooth surface that nothing will want to stick to. 
all I had to do was step back and clean my beds properly. So now what I've started doing, what I did is actually on my hands on some 99% ISO alcohol. And this is just a cleaner alcohol agent that I use on all of my beds right before I print. And as you can see, especially with something like the Ultra Base, my adhesion is absolutely amazing. And I actually do the same thing for my Ender 3 with my magnetic bed. And you can see, uh, I know it's dark down here. I'm still working on the lights. Oh, there we go. My Ender is sticking just fine. And as I've started to continue to use it, it keeps the bed clean. Now, I, I haven't gone and stripped the Ender 3 bed. This magnetic bed could use the same uh, treatment I did on my CR10 uh, S beds, my, uh, my larger magnetic beds, because you can see there's still some glue remnants here. But that iso uh, alcohol has actually been able to strip a lot of that glue away. And now my Ender 3 magnetic beds are performing just as well as the Ultra Bases. So before every print, I'll go and heat up the bed and while it's still warm, I'll actually spray some of the alcohol on it and move it around and it, it cleans it wonderfully. I actually have an ultra base bed sitting right here for a new Ender 3 that I just bought because that one has to go back to the, uh, the one of the programs um, that I help run. So this is the actual ultra base bed for the Ender 3 and you can see how much smaller it is. So I'm actually excited to get this on here and then all five, five out of six of my printers will have this ultra base bed. And then I have my CR10 Max who's just waiting on somebody to go ahead and make one of these. Now there are other types of build surfaces. There's the build tack plates, which are basically these magnetic beds that we've kind of already talked about, but they're, um, it's a spring steel sheet. They're actually metal plates that you flex and the prints will pop off. You guys can go and try those. I know some printer companies actually, when you buy filament, provide these special stickers, almost like painter's tape that you put over your glass bed. But even still, none of these methods matter if your beds aren't clean properly. Clean your beds. Now, if you have a perfectly clean bed and you're saying, I heated everything up, it's nice and warm, it, everything's clean, it's absolutely spotless, you probably have a temperature issue on your printer. You haven't properly dialed in your actual print settings properly for the PLA or the PLA plus or the PET G to actually stick and adhere to your bed. So that's another problem. But if you can guarantee that your bed is clean and it's not an adhesion problem, then you can kind of go back to the filament itself and move over to your settings. So I know in a lot of my videos, uh, my previous videos, yes, I said, I really do love the magnetic beds and I do, I still save them. I have used them a couple times. Um, if I was having trouble getting, you know, a print off and say this had just cooled down and I couldn't pop it off right away, I could go pull this off, throw the magnetic bed on, re-level it real quick and send the next print while this one's cooling down. So with this one actually cooled down, let's see what it takes to actually get this thing off. So one of the little rafts stayed and one of them didn't. And there we go, it came right off. So now this print is safe and sound and it's actually going to a cool little project of mine. Oops, so this actually came out pretty nice. And the bed's all good. So what I can do is just clean this off and print again. That kind of does it guys. I hope that gave you just um, some insight into the kind of uh, things I look for for my bed adhesion, what I'm actually playing with, what I'm actually messing with. Um, let me step out of the room so you can actually hear me. But these are the type of things I look for. Um, th this has just been my experience in the past year and a half. Again, take it with a grain of salt. You might have been using glass beds and had absolutely amazing experience with them. You might swear by the build tack, the flex plates, whatever. So these are the types of things I'm doing and using. Um, I, I, again, I hope it helped you. Uh, just gave you a little bit more insights on the type of build plates out there, but it really just boils down to making sure your build surface is clean and clean and clean and clean. So just make sure you're cleaning it properly, make sure you're heating it up properly, um, and then go ahead and just test some things out. So please drop some comments down below. Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking about this type of stuff, um, what kind of build surfaces you are using, maybe one that I've never even heard about before. I'd be interested to try something like that. So uh, if you guys haven't already, if you could subscribe, I have. I'm trying to make more of the 3D printing related videos and just the experiences I had. Um, I like to think I'm okay at this point. I've gotten a lot of prints out and I have a good variation of printers. So yeah, please, thank you for that, guys. Um, if you guys want to know more about uh, 3D printing and cosplay and building and talk to uh, 700 other people and more growing who are constantly talking about this stuff, uh, please go check out the Discord. There's a link for that down below. It would mean a lot to me. Um, the community is absolutely great and it's free, so why not join it? If you guys have any uh, suggestions or recommendations or requests, on other type of 3D printing videos you guys want to see me make. I am doing a little bit of a filament video soon. Uh, I'm doing just a couple other variations of videos that I think could benefit you guys, um, that you guys are always asking me, like, how are you doing this, how are you doing that? So please stay tuned for those videos, but I'd really like love to hear what you, ideas you guys have. So please uh, leave some comments down below. That just about does it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good day.